The Vizu X-Tex Material Capture System allows fast and accurate conversion of real-world materials into digital textures for use in various 3D applications. Today I will demonstrate the full capture and processing workflow of the X-Tex system. Let's get started. So here I am in X-Tex. We just have a blank screen right now. Before capturing, you want to make sure you are using the correct file formats. So let's go to Edit Preferences, and you can see that X uh, Xtex exports in several different standard formats. Something that I do want to discuss though is the shader format here because this, um, this is pretty important when it comes down to what program you will be bringing this into later on. So we can capture and generate maps for the PBR or metalness uh, uh, format. Additionally, um, we can capture for the Fong shader format. Now, I have PBR, or the .U3M uh, file format selected right now, and these maps on the right are what will be generated. If I switch over to the Fong, you can see the metalness map gets uh, switched out for a specular map. So you choose whichever one you need for your application. So this looks good. Uh, additionally, we can output a, a couple different substance files as well as the NVIDIA MDL file format. So if you use any of these, they are available. Now you do need to have Substance installed on the same PC as Xtex in order for the Substance output to work. So all this looks good. I'll just click OK. One other note before I capture anything. Uh, on the Capture tab on the, on the right-hand side here, you can see all these check marks. Anything that has a check next to it will be captured and generated. So if you don't want transparency or displacement or something, you can just deselect those and they, it won't generate them. Uh, but you cannot go back and just uh, recheck that box. It won't be there after I capture the material. So if you think that you may need all of these at some point, it's best to just capture all of them. The first thing I'm going to do is just open up my live view. So I have the Xtex A4 behind me here. And this live view, um, is just showing exactly what is in the drawer right now. So I already placed a piece of material in there. I did skew it a little bit, so it's uh, just at a bit of an angle to show that we have some adjustments available for that. But when you place your material in there, you want to make sure that it's you know as straight as possible. You don't want it to be stretched or warped, um, and you want to make sure it's not damaged or dirty. You don't want any lint or anything on there because our system will capture exactly what is in the drawer. Um, if you have a, uh, a repeating pattern, you need to make sure that it fits within these brackets, um, as well as have a, a little bit of buffer outside of that repeating pattern for our tiling algorithms to work well later on. So uh, that right there is the live view. This looks good. So I'll close that out. We can also do a focus calibration. So this will automatically focus the camera. You don't have to do this for every single material. If you're working with swatches that are all the same height, you just focus on the first one and then do a bunch of different captures. But it does automatically focus the camera there for you. You don't have to do that manually. The next thing is I'm going to just press this little capture uh, preview capture button, and it will turn on a few lights inside of the Xtex machine and give a preview that you're able to uh, select from. So here we see this is the entire capture area. I can select what I want. I can also rotate the box here, straighten this out a little bit. You could straighten this later on, but I'll just do it right now. So you can just select exactly what you need. Again, if you had a just a single re repeat of the pattern, you would want to make sure that you do have a, a little bit of a buffer around there. Uh, it'll just make your tiling experience a little easier. Um, later on. So this is good though. I have many instances of a repeat, so I'll just go ahead and capture this. I do want to make a no another note here is you want to just select the material and uh, not anything outside of that because it will do its, all of its uh, adjustments based on the selection. All right, so let's go ahead and capture that. This will take two to three minutes depending on your PC um, and the capture area. So I am currently capturing on the A4. That's our smaller machine. Um, the X6A4 can capture up to about an A4 document size. 
Um, the XTEX A2, which is our larger machine, can capture up to an A2 document size. So what you're seeing here is an A4 document size because I have the default lens that comes with the XTEX machine installed. You can use additional lenses um, to, to create a higher resolution capture. With this lens, I have the Nikon D810. It's the older Nikon model. The current XTEX units ship with the Nikon D850, which give you a slightly higher resolution by default anyway. With this lens, it gives me the full capture area. I'll get around 600 DPI. Um, you'll get a little higher with the Nikon D850 on the, uh, the XTEX A4. Now, with uh, a longer focal length, say 105 millimeter on the Nikon D850, you'll get a little over 2000 DPI um, on the XTEX A4. So you can capture very, very high resolution textures. Um, keep in mind though that the other lenses, uh, the more you zoom in, the longer that focal length, um, the, the smaller your capture area will be. So if you need that full capture area, use the, uh, the 35 millimeter on the um, that comes with the XTEX A4 and the 50 millimeter that comes with the XTEX A2. All right, so I have captured and generated all of my maps. You can see it doesn't take very long, um, but you can see now I have all the different maps that I had selected on my capture tab. The next thing I'm going to do is jump over to my tile screen. So over here on the left-hand side, I can click my little tile icon and what we have here is on the left-hand side, our selection. This is just, uh, this is where you can select what you want to have tiled or what you want to be included in the tile algorithm. And on the right-hand side is a preview of the tiling. And you can see right now it is just tiling exactly what I have selected, which does not tile seamlessly. We have a hard edge and the, um, the details don't line up. So we'll get to the tiling in just a second, but what, uh, what, we do enable with our um, adjustments tab is uh, minor adjustments if there are any kind of gradients or anything like that, any kind of wrinkles in your normal map. We actually have some tools to adjust those out so that they don't show up as defects uh, in your tiling uh, later on. So uh, let's look at this right here. So if I have my base color selected, I don't really have any gradient here. This is looking fine, but if I did, there is a remove gradient option down um, at the bottom of the color adjustments tab. Uh, the normal map is where you may make uh, a lot of adjustments. If we look over this, there's really not a whole lot of adjustments to be made to this material, but just for demonstration purposes, if I come over here to the adjustments tab, you can see there's a decrease intensity option. So if you know that after testing our output, um, you're always needing to decrease the intensity of your normal map uh, a certain amount, <clears throat> you could do that beforehand um, while you're processing textures. So you can just make it, uh, again, less intense. Another note on that, um, in the preferences, there is a normal adjustments option, which will actually bring up an advanced normal adjustment pop-up right after you capture the textures, um, which will uh, let you adjust the fine, medium, and large details. So we do have more advanced adjustments, but for many people, just the default normal map works great, and you can adjust intensity here. Additionally, we do have a digital iron option here. So um, again, I don't have any major wrinkles on, on this that I would want to iron out, but if I did, I could use this digital iron, and you'll see these little raised heart shapes. I'll be more extreme here so you can see what it does. It, smooths out, kind of flattens out the larger details while um, keeping the finer details intact. So that is an option that works very well if there were some wrinkles or something like that, that or maybe some bubbles. Sometimes fabric is stretched a little bit and you can't get it completely flat. You can uh, digitally iron that out here in the adjustments. And then one other option, uh, one other map that I like to check uh, where the gradient removal is helpful is on the roughness. Depending on the shininess of your material, you may get some gradients in there. And we do have a remove this remove gradient option there, which helps smooth that out a lot more to produce more ideal results. So you can make those adjustments. One other thing here that I won't do, but I will mention, let's say you can see I have a, a piece of lint or something here. Um, Let's say I have something like that that I want to remove from the color map. 
you can just click this little pencil mark, this little pencil icon above each of these maps, and it will send that map over to Photoshop. It's kind of a live transfer sort of thing. Um, you can do your editing over in Photoshop, and then um, there'll be a little pop-up here where you can click Save in Xtext, and it'll pull that back out of Photoshop and uh, update your texture here. So that's a great way to quickly um, edit maps uh, while um, making sure that everything is still intact with your project and all the maps are connected together and that sort of thing. And if you wanted to edit all at the same time, there is an edit all uh, button here, which brings all of these maps over in the Photoshop as channels. So you can actually edit them uh, at the same time and then you can send it back uh, over into Xtext when you're done. So that is an option for editing out uh, visual imperfections like that. Okay, so once I've done any kind of adjustments and my maps look good, I can look at my tiling options. So on our tiling um, screen here, we have a couple different uh, algorithms. So by default, nothing's enabled. So as I adjust my selection here, you will see it manually updates my tiling preview over there on the right hand side. And I can get this close. I could, I could get this close manually but you will see that even as I get closer, when I zoom in, I still get these harsh edges, right? And um, even if I was perfectly lined up and I could do that manually, get really, really close, right? So you can take the time uh, to do that. And then uh, the standard procedure might be to blend that in Photoshop or something. Uh, we don't need to do that though with Xtext because I can make my selection, click uh, automatic tiling, and let's go to stitching here. Stitching is the default. Um, it will automatically stitch that edge. So now if we, oh, let's pop back over here. If we look at where our seam was, you can see we no longer have those hard edges. It has blended all that in. And that looks pretty good. Now for something like this, uh, where I have many instances of a repeating pattern, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't really use um, the stitching. Stitching is more for something where you have a single repeat and you want to choose you know, the four corners of that repeat and, uh, and then stitch them together. Uh, one additional thing I like to show is if I just grab a corner of this box, I can actually create a skewed shape. So if your uh, repeat was skewed, your fabric stretched a little bit and it was just kind of skewed a little, you can create some odd shapes and straighten that out using your selection on the left here. Uh, let's just undo that. All right, now back to our next algorithm though. So stitching is more for, again, it's just auto stitching if one of our other algorithms doesn't work, or it's just you just captured a single repeat of something. Um, what I would use for this is actually pattern recognition. So pattern recognition will look at my selection on the left and pull out as many instances um, as it can. Uh, the default is, um, a hundred, uh, but it will it will look over here for uh, instances of a repeating pattern and then randomly uh, tile them over a new texture. In this case, the default is 4K and you can change that to whatever values you want to put in here. And it's going to tile that seamlessly and create a texture as close as it can to uh, whatever the, the pixel height and width that you have over here is. Um, now, it's not always going to be a perfect square just because um, in this case, you know, our, um, our pattern doesn't go perfectly into a square. Um, so it'll get as close as it can while making a seamless texture. And you can see all those instances are blended seamlessly. And as I mentioned earlier, if there's any imperfections, you'd want to make sure that those are out because they will show up multiple times throughout your texture. Um, but that looks pretty good. I can check this in 3D here. Let me just pop this window out. I can adjust my shader settings here just to adjust my UV repeat to check how it looks tiled over a larger area. And that looks nice. There's no seams, there's no, when I zoom out, there's no uh, weird shapes that are showing up because uh, things weren't tiled perfectly or the edges didn't line up quite right. So this looks very, very nice. This works well. And pattern recognition works really well for stuff like this as well as solid colors where uh, even though there's no color um, 
repeating color pattern, you do have that repeating weave in the fabric uh, fibers, and it can pull that out and tile that. So that works really well for solid colors that can sometimes be very difficult to tile without um, creating any kind of uh, weird gradient artifact, because again, solid colors can be very uh, difficult to have a, a very even color. So pattern recognition works very well for that. The other option is synthesis. So our, that's our final algorithm. Synthesis works pretty much just like pattern recognition with a couple uh, exceptions behind the scenes as far as what it's doing. But instead of um, sampling individual instances of a repeating pattern, um, it will just randomly sample over whatever you have selected, tile it over a new texture, and then uh, you know, blend those edges together. So that works great for something like a uh, heather material where it doesn't have a specific repeating pattern or, um, or a leather where it's more of an organic uh, feature, right? So synthesis works really well for those. All right, so those are, uh, those are our tiling algorithms. Uh, when I am happy with the results, I can finalize that and it will, it will create those textures. Um, it is tiling all of our different textures at the same time. It's not just the color map that I was viewing here. Um, it's also tiling your normal and uh, roughness and all the others all at the same time so that everything lines up properly and uh, is seamless. And then once this is done, you will see um, it's updated my, at the bottom left-hand corner here, we have a, a bit of information here, as I mentioned, with this camera and lens on the X-Tex A4. I have about 600 DPI. Um, you'll get more uh, with the D850, a little over 600. Um, but you can see our pixel size here. Again, it's not exactly 4K, but um, the 4096 by 4096, but it got it um, as close as it could based on uh, making that repeating pattern seamless. So this is all tiled now. You can see it's done this to all of my different maps here. Here's my normal map. Um, once you are done with the capture and tiling, you might be finished, but you may also want to take advantage of our recoloring tool. So if I come over here on the left-hand side and click our recoloring icon, it brings us to a new screen here. Recoloring works really well uh, if you have many different color variations or colorways of a single fabric. You don't necessarily have to scan and tile every single uh, one of those individually. You could capture one of them and then use our recolor tool to automatically separate out and create masks of these colors. And then you can see at the bottom here, it pulled out three different colors. And I can hover over these and you can see these masks right here. If I click one of them, it brings up a color picker tool and I can either input values here or just choose a color from the color picker, something like that, click OK, and it is going to recolor the material on the right here, and you can see the results. Um, now, if I look, if I zoom in, you can see it's blended this very nicely. It doesn't get rid of all the detail underneath that mask. So it does a very good job recoloring that while keeping all the detail. If you find that it pulled out too many colors, you can drag the, click and drag these colors together to combine the masks. If it didn't pull out enough colors, you can manually put in a number up here in the right. You can also adjust the amount of blur in between the masks um, for blending. Now you don't have to pick these manually from a color picker. Um, something that uh, might be more common is maybe you have predetermined color swatches from, um, from your color teams, right? From Adobe, uh, Adobe Photoshop or something like that. So I can go to File, Load Swatches. I can open up the, an ACO or ASC file, which will import color swatches. Then when I click on one of these colors, this Swatches button will be um, available and I can click it and then just choose from my predetermined colors. So that's a very quick way to go through and recolor everything. You can also export your masks here if you wanted to script the recoloring in a different program. File, export masks, and export those out. When you're happy with your recolored material, you can go to File, Save As, and just save out this, um, this map as an additional PNG. So you could rename this as you know, whatever your color variation is, and it'll save out an additional base color map. Uh, but it does not affect these other maps because again, it's just recoloring it. It's not changing the visual surface properties 
uh, as far as like roughness and shininess and all that. All right, so I'm not going to save this. I'll just cancel that. At this point, um, normally I would save right after a capture, but just for you know uh, having a, a good flow in this video, I just saved it towards the end. Uh, when I'm ready to save my project, I can go to File, Save, and just choose where I want to save this. I'm just gonna save it in this folder here as whatever I want. I'll just leave the default name. You can see it's saving it as a U3M file format, which is for the metalness workflow. If I had chosen the Fong workflow, it would be a .xtex file format. And then once this is done, I'll show you the file structure here. All right, so it's completed, it's saving. Let's open up this folder here. So you can see this is where I saved it. This is actually the folder. It's reassigned the icon to a preview of the uh, material. If I open that up, you can see here's my U3M file. Um, if I had chosen the substance file output options or the uh, NVIDIA MDL, those would also be right here. And then if I open up the texture folder, we have the actual textures that we captured. So you could manually import these in to whatever program you're using. Um, or if your program supports the U3M or uh, .xtext file format, you could import this in. And then one final thing I'd like to show is if you decide that you need these in a, either a different image format or um, a different uh, project format or for a different shader, we have a conversion tool here. So you can go to Edit, Convert to, and then anything that it currently is is grayed out. Um, but I could convert it to the Fong or Xtex project format. So that would open up a new tab and just do the conversion for you. Um, you could do RGBA if you needed that alpha channel included in your base color. Um, and you can do you know, a couple other conversions as well. That's about it for capturing a material with the Xtex system. Please reach out to us if you would like more info or if you have any questions about Xtex or the capture process I showed today.